Hi, Tim Roy. Welcome back to Warriors.com. It's our Warriors.com pre-draft special, and we have assembled a panel of experts here to get us through the 2011 NBA draft. And the two on my left is Coach Randy Bennett, 10 years at St. Mary's, the, the guy who leads the Gales. Welcome. Thank you. And, and of course, former uh, Golden State Warrior Tom Tolbert is in the house. Tim, how are you? Very good. Good to see you. Good to see you. It is draft time, and we'll start this. Go back to when you were drafted, second round pick for the Charlotte Hornets at the time. What was that like? What was the draft experience like for you? I mean, it was really exciting. You grow up, and I think anybody that plays a sport, that is their ultimate dream to be able to play at the highest level, whether it be NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball. So, I mean, it was a really, really cool day. I still uh, remember sitting there with my buddies and getting a phone call and knowing that I'm going to be playing in the NBA. So it doesn't matter at that point what round you're getting drafted in. It's like, wow. You know, all that, all the hard work uh, paid off. Coach, when you uh, coach against a player that gets drafted, or in the case of Patty Mills, who was drafted, is that sort of a satisfying experience for you? Oh, yes. If you, you get a player that gets drafted in the NBA, it's unbelievable. It's hard to do. And a uh, place like we're at, St. Mary's College, it doesn't happen that often. And so, yeah, it's you. I think you get caught up in the, uh, the excitement for the kid just to see him have that opportunity. And like Tom said, it, Every kid in this country grows up hoping to maybe someday be able to do that if they're a player. Uh, 2011 draft, guys, is one that uh, a lot of people are downgrading. They say it's not a great draft, but Tom, I, in my experience, it, it, you always find a couple of guys that you're not expecting in a draft like this that pay off later in five years down the road. You never know who is going to mature at what rate they're going to mature. You never know if they're going to mature with the team that drafted them or maybe four or five years. Down the line, I mean, you get second rounders that play. I mean, I played seven years in the league. I was a second rounder. You get first rounders that play two years in the league. You never know how money is going to affect somebody, maturity. I mean, there's a lot of things. So I, I always try to wait three or four years. But that's kind of the world we live in now. Everybody wants the immediate gratification of knowing exactly how the team did as soon as the draft is over. You, you never can tell. It's impossible to tell. All right, let's get right to it then. Let's start with the top three players, or at least what people consider the top. Uh, three players in the draft, and the guy that people will say is going to go to number one is Kyrie Irving out of Duke, the freshman guard. Now, he didn't play a lot this year, but you, Coach Bennett, probably saw him as much as anybody in, in the country. You had a chance to coach him. I only saw him three days, so <laughs> wherever that puts me. But uh, no, I was I had the fortune of being part of the under 18 trials last summer, and so Kyrie was the point guard, and he, he was, I had never seen him like out recruiting. I and mean, he was the guy that when you're in the gym with him, you just knew he especially gets to balls. And he does things you can't coach. He's just, he makes everybody else better on the floor. And that's, I think that's what you look for in a point guard. He had a good size and good speed and quickness and natural leader. So now we move on to Derek Williams from your alma mater, yeah. U of A. Maybe the best player in the world. <laughs> but he's a guy that, I, you know, I, I don't get to watch a lot of college. Uh, sports because of the, the pro schedule, but you know, when I saw him play a couple times last year, I said he's a guy who's going to play in the league. You know, he has that presence. And what, what do you think he is going to end up in the NBA? Four? You know, I don't know. If he's going to be a four, a three, or just a guy that can play. I think mean, sometimes we label guys: Do you have to be a two? Do you have to be a one? Do you, I mean, if you can play, you can play, and you find a way to get it done. And I think what I like most about Derek Williams is he wasn't one of these guys who was a McDonald's All-American, five-star recruit. In fact, if you go back to when Arizona was able to get him, and a lot of that was the whole Tim Floyd situation at USC, those guys decided Solomon Hill, Momo Jones, and Derek Williams decided to go to Arizona. He was the lowest rated guy out of those three. So you look at it now, and you say, wow. How? And we talked about it a little earlier about guys maturing at different rates. And I love the fact that you get a guy who wasn't the McDonald's All-American, the blue chip recruit. Has and then, something to prove. And two years later, I mean, that shows you how much he's worked on his game, how much it means to him. I love the fact he draws fouls. He got to the free throw line at a ridiculous rate last year. I think he led the country in field goal uh, attempts. And is it one of the top two or three in field goals made? Left-handed. He's uh, ambidextrous, or amphibious, as Charles Shackelford once said. <laughs> so, I mean, he does a lot of things. He proved he can shoot from the outside. I think at one point during this year, he was leading, like, uh, I think he would have been number one in the record books at Arizona for three-point percentage, which is absurd, right? I mean, Steve right. Kerr was number one exactly. at one point. But, I mean, it shows you his game. He can put the ball on the ground. He can shoot. He can score left. He can score right. And I think he got a lot better in two years. So, if he gets that much better in the next two years, look out. Yeah, the Warriors pick at 11 and, and 44. Let's get to that 11th pick. Who are some of the guys you think will be there 
for the Warriors at 11. Coach, why don't you start us off? That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't take the guy out of the pick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? If You're not sure where they're going to fall, but if Tristan Thompson's around at that spot, I think that's a, he's a guy that I like. He's, he's an athlete that's good size and front court player that's uh, I think he's a good a good defender right now. Like, you know, it'll take him time with the NBA, but he, he has the tools. He's done it in college. And if there's some way that he slips down to 11, I think that'd be. I think it'd be, they would probably be excited to get that one. Six and eight freshman from Texas, Tommy. I'll stay in the same conference. I like uh, Marcus Morris. Uh, Who was here for a workout? Yeah, I liked his. I, I like his his basketball IQ. I like the fact that he's got a little nasty in his game. He can step out and hit some jump shots, but he's not afraid to get in there and battle for rebounds. Um, I, I like guys that come from Kansas. I think they know the game and they just kind of understand what to do. Clay Thompson's another guy that I like who would definitely add size to the backcourt. A guy that can just flat out score. I mean, this guy can shoot and you, you like the length. I mean, it, Let's face it, the Warriors need some size in the backcourt. I mean, you know, that's the one good thing about not being great is that you don't have to say, what do we, we need a lot. Right. You know, you need, the Warriors need size in the front line, they need backcourt size, they need depth across the, the team. So, I mean, they can just go out there and say, who is the best available guy? We hear that all the time, but I still think some teams think, well, that sounds good, but we need to really address, address this. So, if those two are still there, I mean, I'm guessing I would I would go size, but Clay Thompson to me, I think is going to be a pretty nice player in the NBA. I really do. All right, well, let's get let's get to the West Coast. Though. Let's talk a little West Coast basketball. Coach, give me a couple of guys that uh, you saw or, or know this year on the West Coast that you like that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, we saw him yeah. against San Diego. Yeah, San Diego State. He was. He'll be. I think he'll be a good pro. He's. Uh, he's project go pretty high in the draft, but he. He. Uh, He's tremendous at one thing, and I think that transfers into the NBA. That he's a tremendous rebounder. He's just relentless about going to the boards. He's got great length, huge hands, and uh, I think he's the other thing he has. Everybody says about him, he's a great worker. And uh, I know when we didn't, went down and played him, we got we, it was, we had an evening practice, and he was the only guy left in the gym. He's down there working on his game. So I think the combination of that, he'll he'll end up being. He, he learned to play on the perimeter this year. They played him some at. Uh, he even messed around with him bringing up the ball some, but he's, he's already a three. And I think if, he's, if he keeps working and his skill will come around where he can be a three that can shoot it and put it on the floor and make plays. And I'm just telling you, on the, on the, on the rebounds, he'll be a factor at any level he plays at. Now let's talk about the guy that I think has uh, a lot of debate uh, going to the NBA about this particular player, and that's Jimmer Fredette out of BYU. You know, where do you guys see him? My question when I look at a guy yeah. is, you know, who is he going to guard in the league? You know, what kind of players can he stop in the league? Nobody. Yeah. No, no, seriously. I mean, he can't. I don't know who this guy can guard. I, I really don't. But what I talked about earlier, he brings something special to the table. I can flat out shoot. Now you have to ask yourself, is that worthy of a 12th pick, 16th pick, 20th pick, something like that? But he's a guy that if you have any inside presence or a guy that can penetrate and kick, I mean, he can stretch the court out to 30 feet and make shots. And I think offensively, he's very, very gifted. Now, I mean, obviously, I was being a little facetious there. He can guard a few people. But I, it depends a lot of times. I mean, is he going to be smart enough to know which way guys want to go? Which way the guy is going to want to go who's on the post? So when he comes down and help, he knows which shoulder to go to. Which way the guy driving wants to go? And who's going to rotate out to shoot? I mean, there's a lot of things on the defensive end that if you're smart, you can be a really good team defender without being a good man-to-man -man defender. But boy, this guy can flat out fill it up. I mean, he is a special offensive player. And for that reason alone, I don't know if he's a starting two guard on a really good team or a guy that comes off the bench and gives you 12 points in 18 minutes, something like that. Hi, right, Tim Roy Warriors.com. Thank you for watching our pre-draft special. And for more draft coverage, click and roll here at Warriors.com.